In this video, we will talk about the indeterminate forms and the L'Hopital rule, but we will only focus on the indeterminate power forms. Power forms are all of these, zero to the power of zero, infinity to the power of zero, and one to the power of infinity. Of course, we know that this behind the zeros, infinities, and one, we do have a function that is approaching these values respectively. Infinity is not a number. That's the reason that including the forms that include infinity are indeterminate, undefined at the moment. And we have to uh, rewrite them, of course, to the form of the quotient, zero to the zero, zero over zero and infinity over infinity, and then apply the L'Hopital rule. That's the forms, indeterminate power forms. One more time, we can see we do have function f taken to the power of the function g, and then all of these quantities, all of these numbers, and we've got, we're getting these uh, indeterminate forms. I can try to showed, I mean, to prove it, that the, definitely these forms are indeterminate, we may rewrite <clears throat> this power forms, this exponential forms, we depends what we're looking at, uh, using some exponential property. When we have a quantity A, I can rewrite, I can use the cancellation equation, I can comb combine, com make the composition of the natural exponential function with the natural logarithmic function, e to the power of ln of a. And of course, e, the ex natural exponential and logarithmic, they can cancel out each other and the input will stay a. That means this is a property that we will use to rewrite. And let's see, let's just use the symbols at the moment. Zero to the power of zero will be my quantity a then I will rewrite as a e to the power of ln and zero to the power of zero. That zero, which is placed in the exponent, I can put in front of the logarithmic function. Let me put just to have the correct domain, put the zero from the right hand side. And then I have zero and logarithmic function at zero from the right hand side goes to the negative infinity. That means we can see I did end up with indeterminate form, which is proving that zero to the zero is also indeterminate. And then we can proceed from that. We can rewrite this as a quotient and apply the L'Hopital rule eventually. Okay, that means this will be the process. And we can try to do infinity to the power of zero, e to the power of ln, infinity to the power of zero. That zero again, I can place in front of the logarithmic function and logarithmic function at infinity goes to the infinity, slowly, but goes to the infinity. We end up with indeterminate form and we probably can rewrite as a quotient because we practice this and hopefully will be zero over zero or infinity over infinity and we can apply the L'Hopital rule. Okay, so that's the way. And let's do the last one, one to the power of infinity, e ln one to the power of infinity. That infinity is a power exponent I can place in front of the logarithmic function and then ln at one is a zero. Again, we end up with indeterminate form and we will try to rewrite in terms of the quotient and apply the L'Hopital rule. But you may see this, we will focus just on that part, which will be the, the whole exponent of the E number. And then the final answer will be E to the power of this. Okay, E to the power, that means we will focus on that exponent and then please always remember that the final answer is e to the power of whatever answer we will get. Okay, let's practice, but I think I have, yeah, that's the same thing. You may probably notice 
I did rewrite my function f of x to the power of g of x, like we had zero to the power of zero. I say e, and this is yeah, I make the <coughs> I make the shortcut, but everything came f to the power of g uh, e, we can rewrite as a e ln f to the power of g, and then e g I can place in front. I just skip the x that we can see that that's the same thing. And of course, this is the logarithmic form, but in order to solve for y, that's e, we will also get e to the power of this number is giving me y. And that means that's the same thing, but we will use this this way. And of course, later when we rewrite, we will try to look for zero over zero or infinity over infinity and apply the logical rule. Example number one. Find the limit as x goes to zero from the right hand side, x to the power of x. As we can see, it's the power form. f of x to the power of g of x, and actually it's zero to the power of zero. Okay, that means let's start. Limit as x goes to zero from the right hand side and my quantity x to the power of x I will rewrite as a e to the power of ln of x to the x. Limit as x goes to zero e and then I can put that x in front. And as I said, because the exponential function is the continuous function, we will just focus on that exponent. Okay, that's when we will have e and the limit that we will compute, limit as x goes to zero, is just for x times ln of x. And the final answer will be e to the power of that limit. Okay, that's me that the final answer. Let's compute this limit. Limit as x goes to zero, x times ln of x. And we can see this is zero. Natural logarithmic function at zero is negative infinity. That's when we do have indeterminate product form. We will switch and we will rewrite as a quotient. I will keep ln of x and one over x. Logarithmic at zero is negative infinity. One over zero is a big number, positive infinity. We allowed to use the L'Hopital rule. Limit as x goes to zero. Derivative of ln of x is one over x. Derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. After simplifying, we will have negative x because I can flip this and x squared divided by x is x and negative. And this is zero, that means that's zero, which means I can put zero here. The final answer is one. The final answer is one. I know you may probably say, oh, any number to the power of zero is one, but please never choose right away the option one. We have to have the reason. Okay, that we can see, I just place this, okay? The answer is one. Let's do another one. Limit as x goes to zero from the right-hand side, one plus sine of four x to the power of cotangent. Okay, that means sine at zero, four times zero is zero. Sine at zero is zero, that means we have one, and cotangent at zero, uh, Cotangent at zero from the right hand side, oh, I think it's positive infinity because cotangent has the. Um, I will draw it, but I can. Cotangent has an asymptote at zero, pi, and cotangent looks like that. That's pi over two. That's we can see from zero from the right hand side goes, okay, goes to positive infinity. Okay, that's we do have one to the infinity, this is also one of the indeterminate power forms. Let's rewrite. Limit as x goes to zero from the right hand side. This is my entire quantity, that means e 
to the power of ln and I will copy my quantity. 1 plus sine of 4x to the power of cotangent. Limit as x goes to the x, 0 from the right hand side. Cotangent of x is the exponent of the input of the log I will place in front. Cotangent of x times ln of 1 plus sine of 4x. Okay. And the same thing, we will just focus on the limit of the exponent. That's when we will have e to the power of limit of cotangent of x times natural log 1 plus sine of 4x and x goes to 0 from the right hand side. And the final answer will be e to the power of that number. Okay, that's when we have to compute this limit. Okay, let's see. Limit as x goes to 0 from the right hand side. Okay, and cotangent. We can see that we have product. Let's, let me rewrite in terms of the quotient. That means instead of multiplying by cotangent, I can multiply by 1 over tangent. Mm. Okay, that means instead of cotangent, I will put, I will copy ln plus sine of 4x. Multiplying by cotangent means dividing by tangent. That means we do have a quotient right away. Let's check. If x is 0, sine at 0 is 0, ln at 1 is 0, tangent at 0 is 0. Perfect. We do have indeterminate form. We can use the L'Hopital rule. The ratio of the function is the same like the ratio of the derivatives of these functions. Derivative of ln of 1 plus sine of 4x is 1 over 1 plus sine of 4x times derivative of this expression, which derivative of sine of 4x is cosine of 4x times 4. And then derivative of tangent of x is secant square of x. And now x is 0. If x is 0, sine is 0, that's when we have 1. Cosine at 0 is 1 times 4. Secant at 0 is 1 squared, okay? That's mean the final answer. I mean the answer of this limit is 4, and the final answer is e to the power of 4. I can use maybe blue color. That's the final answer, okay? Or I can say e to the power of 4. Please remember always put back because that's the value from the exponent. Okay? And we can see 1, 1 to the power of infinity gave us a finite number. And let's do one more. Limit as x goes to 1 from the right hand side. 2 minus x to the power of tangent of pi x over 2. It means substituting 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, and uh, tangent at pi over 2 from the right-hand side, it's negative infinity. Okay, that means this is 1 to the infinity. It's also indeterminate form. Let's rewrite in terms of the exponents, exponential function. Limit as x goes to 1 from the right-hand side, e to the power of ln, and I will copy the entire quantity. 2 minus x to the power of tangent pi x over 2. Tangent of pi x over 2, I can place in front. Limit as x goes to 1. E, and then tangent of pi x over 2 times ln of 2 minus x. Since everything is in the exponent and the exponential, the logarithmic ex, uh, exponent, natural ex, exponential function is continuous function, I can just focus on the inner quantity, which means I will have e to the power of limit at 1 of tangent pi over x over 2 times ln 2 minus x. 
and the final answer will be e to the power of that number. Okay, we have to compute this. Okay, let's compute the limit which is placed in the exponent. Limit at one, and again, tangent. Instead of multiplying by tangent, I will divide by cotangent. Okay, that means I will have cotangent of pi x over 2. Let's check. 1, 2 minus 1, 1. ln of 1, 0. Cotangent at pi over 2 is 0 because x is 1. We are allowed to use the L'Hopital rule. Limit as x goes to 1 from the right hand side. The L'Hopital rule, one more time, means that the ratio of the function is the same like the ratio of the derivatives. Derivative of ln of 2 minus x, it's 1 over 2 minus x, times derivative of 2 minus x, which is negative 1. Derivative of negative x is negative 1. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant square of the same angle times derivative of that angle, which is just pi x over 2. Derivative is just pi over 2. And let's check what we have. Substituting 1 for x, we will have 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 1 will give me negative. Um, okay, let me, let's actually do it here. Negative 1 on the top. Then we have additional negative in the denominator because this negative is not squared. Cosecant, it's 1 over sine, if that's easier. Substituting for x1, we have just pi over 2, and then pi over 2. Okay, maybe just to have negative and negative will give me positive. Pi over 2, I can flip, have 2, pi, uh, two over pi, and sine at pi over 2 is 1. That means this is 1. Okay, that means this is my answer for the x. And in the final, the final step e to the power of 2 over pi. And I can just relate e to the power of over pi. Okay? It's the final answer. You may practice like repeating the same three examples, and this will be good practice. Thank you.